Well, ladies and gentlemen, by now you've all heard it. You've all heard of the heinous case out in California in which a Stanford University student has been given a slap on the wrist for raping an unconscious, inebriated woman behind a dumpster outside of a frat party. And you've probably heard the absurd reasoning on which the judge based that sentence, that a harsher sentence would have a severe impact on the defendant. Wow. Mind blown and stomach turned. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here, this case is a perfect example of why we as a society, particularly in the criminal justice system, need to preserve the concept of retributive justice. Now, what does retributive justice mean? It means that one of the main purposes of criminal punishment, if not the main purpose of it, is to ensure that wrongdoers are made to pay a price that is commensurate with the nature and severity of the crime that they've committed. In other words, making sure that wrongdoers get what they deserve. Some people might think that this view would be uncontroversial, but you'd be surprised. There are a lot of folks out there who think that making sure that wrongdoers get what they deserve should not be a factor that should enter into resolutions of criminal cases. I have to disagree. Even as a libertarian who believes in limited government, I still do believe that the criminal law is a very critical and central function of government. And I believe that central to the very concept of justice in any context is the concept of desert. I think when you take all of the credible interpretations and boil them down to their basic essence, what does justice really mean at the end of the day? It means making sure that people get what they deserve and don't get what they don't deserve, particularly based on their actions, sometimes based on other factors as well, but particularly based on their actions, especially in the criminal justice context. I don't think you can have justice that's worthy of that term without taking desserts into account, without, in other words, employing retributive justice. Now, I'm not saying that other purposes of the criminal justice system don't deserve to enter into the equation as well. I believe in rehabilitation when it can be done and when it should be done. I believe in deterrence, again, to the extent that it can be achieved effectively by the system. But I don't believe in focusing on those purposes to the complete and total exclusion of the issue of retributive justice. Now, I agree that American society is nowhere near as free as it should be. And I think a main reason for that is that there is too punitive an attitude on the part of many lawmakers and ordinary Americans. There are far too many forms of conduct that are criminalized in American society when they shouldn't be. And even of those that deserve to be criminalized, many of them are punished far too harshly and severely. But ladies and gentlemen, rape? is not one of those crimes that does not deserve to be punished severely. If anything, the justice system has not yet done a good enough job of punishing this particular crime as severely as it deserves to be punished. Now, I say this as someone who is acquainted with at least several rape survivors in the United States. I have several friends, good friends, women I really cherish, who are have been victims of rape. In none of their cases, I'm sad to say, were the perpetrators really given the punishments that they really had coming to them. In the first such case, my friend who was a rape survivor told me that she didn't even bother going to the authorities because she didn't want to have to sit on the witness stand and have her reputation and her name dragged through the mud by a slick defense lawyer. And so her rapist walks free to this day. There needs to be a balance between limiting government power and making sure that punishments of various forms of prescribed conduct are not too severe or draconian. And on the other hand, making sure that the real heinous wrongdoers out there get what's coming to them. This kind of case, this kind of outcome is the kind of thing you get when you poo-poo retributive justice and focus on other factors to the exclusion of retributive justice. Apparently in European countries, European legal systems, retributive justice more or less isn't a thing, or at least it's not much of a thing. In the United States, it still is. And while it is often taken too far in many cases, obviously there are many cases where it's not taken nearly far enough. I don't even know what this judge was on about in the reasoning that he used to justify his decision in this case. The punishment would have too severe an impact on the perpetrator? Hello, that's the very purpose of the concept of punishment. The whole idea behind punishment in general, from the lowliest punishment a parent might inflict on a wayward child, all the way up to the most severe punishment that a society can inflict on wrongdoers, namely the death penalty, and everything in between, the purpose of all those punishments is to make the wrongdoer pay a price commensurate with the nature of the offense. Take that off the table, and this kind of outcome is what you end up with. This is the kind of case that I think can serve as a cautionary tale. Keep this case in mind 
the next time you have a debate with someone about the death penalty or some other form of criminal punishment in which that person says it doesn't matter whether the wrongdoer deserves a certain punishment or not. I've heard people make that argument before and I made the same point in response that I'm making right now and this case is a perfect illustration of why. So ladies and gentlemen, the next time you feel tempted to dismiss retributive justice as a legitimate goal of criminal justice policy, remember the Stanford Rapist.